Hello and welcome again to another episode of the Just Ask Vent Show. Today is going to be the second in a three-part series of load releasing hitches. Uh, today we're going to tie the Mariner's hitch and again I'm going to be assisted by Sean Haynes with the North Carolina Office of State Fire Marshal. It's a very simple hitch to tie. All we're going to need is a piece of one inch flat or tubular webbing tied into a loop with a water knot and a couple of carabiners. We're going to tie this by clipping one of the carabiners through the loop. At this point, we're going to take and we're going to attach one of the two legs of the loop to the anchor carabiner. From here, we're going to take the two legs together and we're going to form a round turn around the anchor carabiner. At this point, we will travel down to the load carabiner and then we will simply wrap the remaining tail around the bundle. You need to make several wraps. It's not necessary that you wrap the entire piece of webbing, but you want to make several wraps to, to give that added friction. And then you're going to take the end of this tail and you're going to pass between the two pairs of webbing that attaches to each end. And we're going to just simply secure this off with a half hitch and an overhand. Now Vince, is it my understanding from the other textbooks that I've seen that they make a, a made kit which has a piece of webbing that has fixed ends that are sewn into it that you can do the Mariner's Hitch with? That's correct. They, they demonstrate this with a load anchor strap that's actually got sewn ends on it. Uh, it's a little bit different variation uh, depending on the text that you reference. Just as we attach the radium load release hitch to tandem triple wrap prusiks, we would similarly attach the Mariner's Hitch to those tandem triple wrap prusiks for our belay line. At this point, we would have to mine the prusiks, and then as the load were to fall and is pulled out of my hand, the tandem triple wrap prusiks lock and the load transfers, or at least partially transfers, onto the belay line. At this point, we need to get the load off of the belay line back onto the main. We've corrected our problem, and we're going to begin by untying the overhand and the half hitch in the mariner's hitch. And now as Sean begins to unweave the wraps around the body of the mariner's hitch, the tension is going to overcome the friction and the load is going to begin to move. And then the load will transfer back onto the main line. Just as we did with the radium load release hitch, we would want to reset this system and retie it back at its shortest configuration so if we have another malfunction, we've got that added slack in the system that allows us to release it and transfer the load back onto the main line a second time. Vince, is it my understanding with the webbing loop like we're using that we clipped into both ends that in the event that something happened, human error, that this system would actually, it provides a fail safe? Yes, yeah, additional safety factor. If there were a human error and someone were to let go of the entire system, by clipping through the loop on both ends, as this travels, it still captures on the anchor carabiner. The other variation that you'll see referenced in some texts will actually just travel through. If you would, untie that. The other variation just shows taking the bite through and then coming back through the load carabiner. And at this point, you would make your wraps. The problem with this version is as he unties it, and he starts to undo the wraps and the load starts to move. If he loses control, the load will actually travel and come right off of the carabiner. And this concludes the second in a three-part series of load release hitches. Join us again next time on the Ask Vent Show 
for load release hitch three, which is using a figure eight plate as a load release hitch.